Well, 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 look where we are, back at this place. I should come up with a better name for this place instead of the property where the sawmill is. I would normally call them other things, but those things give away where the places are, which is normally okay, normally okay but this is the internet and there are a lot of people watching. I need to give them internet friendly names instead of the sawmill property, the coast property. We'll work on that. I've been away most of the summer. I haven't even been here in three months, but we're gonna take a walk around, see what the flat-headed fur borers and the pine beetles have been doing. My concern is they've been killing trees, so we're gonna go see what the carnage is. After I assess the damages, then I can decide if I wanna salvage the dead trees or practice denial forestry, pretend the problem's not happening, and spend my time doing other things. First, I wanna go way over there where I can see some reds and non-greens popping up out of the green. I already knew this one was dead. It died last year. It's smaller than it looks, and trying to salvage it would damage too many of the oaks around it. That pine's looking questionable. There's some firs in here that are looking beyond questionable. We're gonna go see just how questionable the questionable can be. This is that larger pine we were looking at from the sawmill. Behind it is where we saw some questionable looking trees. From up close, they do look questionable. Dead Douglas fir there. That one's dead. It's not very big, but it's a good straight tree. Very straight. For here, this other one, also not very big and it has some defect in it. This one's looking bad. Still green though. I don't know if it's gonna die this year or not, but it's on its way out. The bugs will get it if they haven't already. This whole stand of Douglas fir right here needs to be logged. The bugs are just slowly moving their way through. They're gonna get almost every one of them, I think, eventually. To take all of these out at once and get a log truck load of logs would be moderately profitable, but to bring the tractor all the way over here to get these two dead trees, maybe three, bring the truck and trailer over here to load them up, is it really worth it? That's questionable. I've had a lot of them die in here over the last few years. The one in the back here still has red needles, but I think it died last year. It's probably too far deteriorated. The tops of these look really questionable. All these Douglas fir need to go. Make room for something that's better suited for this site. Over the hill from here is another bug prone spot. This site over the hill that's usually bug prone is looking pretty good. I think the bugs already got most of the bug prone Douglas fir here. It's not looking as bad over here as I thought it might. But there could be some that are dead, they just haven't browned out yet. A lot of times this time of year, the bugs will have already got in them and killed them, but they are still green. The trees are dead, they just don't show it yet. But I'm not seeing the woodpecker holes and I'm not hearing the woodpeckers, which are an indication that they are dead. The obviously dead one here died a couple years ago. The one behind it, the needles are starting to turn. That one's dead. I can see woodpecker holes in it. It's obviously dead, but still too small to be worth bringing equipment in here to salvage. Now we're on the next ridge over. There's a sick looking Douglas fir over here. Top of that one is not looking good. But it still has some green on it. If we take a closer look at it, I'm not seeing any woodpecker holes in it. It's a tree that does need to go, but it looks like it's only the top of it's dying out. The bottom part of it probably still will stay alive. There's no priority. On a tree like that where it's only the top dying out and the lower part looks like it's going to stay alive, I'll leave that one for now, wait for hopefully better market conditions, then take it then. This one came down in a snowstorm a year or two ago. I can see the borers are in it. It's, it's growing mushrooms too. This one's too far gone. This pine up here, 
looks like it's browning out. A lot of the pines here look like they are browning out, but they are not. This time of year in the fall, you see a lot of brown in the pines. That's because they are shedding their old needles, but they still have their new green needles. This pine, even though it looks like it might be dying, this one's healthy. The ponderosa pine that are turning brown because they are dying have a different look than the ones that are just shedding their needles. I guess it takes some looking at them to know what you're looking at to know the difference. Well, hello, deer. Oh, this fur is dead. Very dead. This one is full of woodpecker holes. This well-rotted cavity makes me think it's probably not worth salvaging, partly because the wood is rotten. It's here by itself. It would be a lot of time to bring equipment in to get this one tree out, and it's probably more valuable as a wildlife tree. So we'll leave this one here. I never did see that pine we were looking at from the sawmill. It may just be shedding needles. We'll keep an eye on it from the mill. It looked like it was too small to probably do anything with anyway. Now for the part I'm most concerned about, and that is across the creek. Driving through here a few times, I've noticed, looking through the trees, a discomforting number of brown and red patches back there. There's one well beyond questionable Douglas fir. Another one. I already knew that one was on its way out a year ago. It might be too far gone now. Another one back there. I knew that one was going last year. I didn't take it because it would be hard to get it out of here without damaging the oaks. And this is a place where I should be favoring the oaks. And it's small, has some defect, it's just not worth very much. Up here I see some brown in this pine tree. Needles are turning brown, but if you look at the tips, you see green at the tips. It's hard to see it from here, it's behind this fir tree, but the top of it is healthy. If you notice these pines have shed their lower branches, sometimes you'll see the lower branches that have completely died. A lot of times that's just normal. They shed their lower branches, makes it harder for fire to climb up into the tops. Unless they have all these Douglas fir trees crowding them out then the firs carry the fire up. That's just one of many reasons why when the market turns around for Douglas fir, I want to take a lot of these out. These pines over here died last year. I knew they were already dead. Some of these firs back here are the ones I girdled last fall. I cut rings around the bases of them to favor these madrones. The madrones are better suited to this site the firs would just keep growing and keep crowding them out until eventually the bugs killed the firs. Might as well just take them out now. They are too small to be worth salvaging. Just leave them here for the wildlife. A small pine died over there, but I know that one's too small and crooked to do anything with. I didn't realize I had this much firewood still back here. I need to get that picked up before it gets too rained on. These pines that died last year I might be able to salvage those, get some good blue pine out of them still, if they're not too rotten. They might be too far gone now. One of the reasons I didn't take them is they're gonna do a lot of damage to some nice hardwoods coming down. This is more of a wildlife part of the property and not so much a timber growing part of the property. I may just leave those for the birds. Right next to them, this pine looks like it's turning brown, but it's just shedding its old needles. The needles at the tips, the newest needles, are still green and healthy. Especially when we start getting some stormy weather, they will all fall off like these ones. This whole bug prone stretch, I am not seeing much mortality at all. Not like last year. This is the end of the bug prone area, so we'll go back down there. Last year I came in here and salvaged a bunch of them. They were so close together and concentrated, that makes it more profitable when they are close together instead of scattered all over the place. I'm just not seeing a lot of 
for mortality in this spot this year. Anything mortality. Just a few. One of the reasons I salvaged them last year, I wanted to get the bugs hauled out of here. If you salvage them now or in the winter before the bugs fly, the bugs are still in the trees. If you haul them out, you get rid of the bugs if you dispose of the bark. It may be salvaging these last year, hauling a lot of the bugs out of here was effective. That may be why we're not seeing very many dead trees this year. It was really sunny, but now the sun went away all of a sudden. That's weird. Just ignore that. This first Douglas fir we saw it's a really good came size across for the creek. my mill. I may salvage that one. It's easy to get to. It's not far to bring the tractor. It's a really good size for my mill. Not super straight, but straight-ish. Small knots. This will make good quality lumber. If I do bring the tractor over to get this one, I may get that other one that I said would be hard to get out between the oaks without damaging them. It's just right over there. There might be a way to get that out. It'll be a challenge, but challenges aren't always bad. That one does have a defect in it, but it's probably mostly good wood, and it would be good to get these bugs out of here. There's one more I want to look at on the way back, on the other way back, the way we're going back this time. It's up over, well, I'll just show you. We're not there yet, we're only right here, but on my way there, I saw this one. This one is browning out. Woodpecker holes, it's dead. That's another really good sized tree for my mill. It's gonna have a lot of wood with very few knots, small knots. That one's worth salvaging. And not far away from those ones we just looked at. These are more concentrated than those ones we first looked at up the hill, and bigger and better quality. Okay, we're still not there. We're just up the road from over there. But I saw this tree with a dead top in it. The top's totally turned brown. The lower foliage is still green. I don't see any bug holes in it. It may not die this year. That tree does need to go, but it's not a priority because it might still stay alive for a while. It's not in danger of quickly rotting away like the obviously dead ones. Then there's that one. It's browning out and it has woodpecker holes. It's dead. Now we're at the spot where we were going. This Douglas fir, I thought maybe the top was just dying, but the rest of the foliage is turning color. And the woodpeckers are really working it over, trying to get to the bugs that killed it. And it's a good sized tree. Really good size for my mill. And it's on the way to go get those other ones. The tractor would be going right by here. Well, now I have to decide, do I want to spend part of the fall and winter salvaging these trees, cutting them into lumber, cutting, I said that weird, cutting them into lumber, or practice denial forestry, pretend it isn't happening, and go do something else. Like, I don't know, maybe go to the ranch and sit on a rock. As nice as that is, I might get bored with that after a while. There's a lot more of the property to cover, but we've covered most of the bug prone areas. It's not as bad as I thought it was last year, but last year I thought it was not as bad as it was last year until I started really looking around. I might look around more and find more. But this is all the looking around I want to do today because I don't want to find more. So we'll call this the end.